Welcome back, you guys. So, crazy, crazy. I'm going to say 72 hours on Colts Twitter and Colts Nation. Legereus Sneed, Julian Blackman, everything else. We're going to touch on all that and more on this, the No Horsing Around podcast. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so crazy couple of days. So let's backtrack a little bit, obviously, right? So I haven't talked to you guys in, in about, you know, four or five days. And, you know, I don't know. Did something happen in the last four or five days? Because apparently something did. I'm just kidding. Um, the Colts were linked heavily with Legereus Sneed, who's franchise tagged by the Kansas City Chiefs. Right? We heard a lot of different information. We heard they were down to the last couple of teams that they had inquired, all these different things. Saturday rolls around, and Destin Adams of A to Z Sports, previously of the Blue Stable, previously a Stampede Blue, um, tweeted out that the deal was done. Compensation had been agreed upon. They were still kind of hammering out. The deal wasn't all the way done, but they were hammering out the final few details. He expected the announcement to come that the Colts were finalizing the trade for Legeria Sneed. Okay. Not, but probably 20 minutes after that, Stephen Holder of ESPN of the athletic of the Indy star, <laughs> big time Colts insider, big time Colts reporter tweeted out. There was no such deal. He had not heard anything. In fact, he was leaning heavily that the deal was not going to happen. Right. So then we have a war of insiders, right? Um, going back and forth. I trust them both. I came out on Twitter. I defended Destin because I know him personally, have for about four years. Um, I have crossed paths with Stephen Holder, like at training camp and such last year, but didn't really have a chance to talk to him. But I came out and my, my stance was different people have different sources who are hearing different things. So I kind of held steady with that. And then, you know, then it comes out today as a recording of this, that Adam Schefter says the Colts and the Chiefs have never spoken, which doesn't feel right because also on the same day you have Diana Rossini, another uh, insider with The Athletic, come out and say it was really down to them and the Titans. So we're kind of to a point that it just feels like this is all just muck. Like it's just all, nothing's going to come of this luxurious need. If it happens, hey, great, but it doesn't look like it's going to. So the question now is where do you go from here? If you're not going to get Legereus Sneed, if you've been trying to do this, trying to solidify the corner position, with going out and getting a young, very talented corner, and you're not going to get him, where where do we turn, right? Like where do we look at this point? Kind of for me, I think corner wise, you there, there's two ways you pivot outside of the draft. We'll talk about the draft. We got five weeks till the draft, somewhere around there, give or take. We'll talk about the draft and the corners like Cooper Dijon and them, right? Uh, as we get a little bit closer, but looking for that veteran in the secondary and the back end, who do you turn towards? A couple of names that I've heard, not not that they're interested in, but that we've heard floated out that I like that are still out there. Xavier Howard is one. I think he's gotten kind of a bad rap, obviously, over the last two seasons. He's had a down, kind of a tick down in his production, right? I mean, you look, he had a pick last year, a pick the year before, but the year before that he had five, the year before that in 2020, he had 10, right? One, seven, four. So he was, you know, he is, he is kind of on the 30, the wrong side of 30, but that's still pretty, you know, you can make that work. I think it's important to point out that he, uh, he's had what two different defensive coordinators the last two seasons under a new head coach, the last two, uh, I think there's potential there. I think he still has some in the tank. That's one that interests me that I would be interested to see if they're going to bring him back or bring him to Indy. I think you could get him. He's a veteran leader uh, at one point, highest paid and highly looked upon uh, as a, as a player in 2020, he got defensive player of the year, right? So uh, the other one we hear that we're hearing that a lot of people are putting out there is obviously do you want to bring Gilly Lock back, right? Like, do you want to bring Stefan Gilmer back? Obviously, with the Colts two years ago, had an amazing season. You know, he called game multiple times. 
He looked good. Now, he is way on the far side of 30. Obviously, he's 33. He didn't have as good a season it felt last year for the Cowboys. Still the same number of picks. Knows the system. He was here with Gus Bradley two years ago, right? Um, could it be a good fit? Would he be willing to come back? You treated him right on the way out the door, right? You He wanted to kind of be traded to go to a contender because it didn't look like that was going to be the case in Indy. Would he be willing to come back? Also, this is another defensive player of the year at one point uh, in 2019. So is that someone you look at? Those are kind of two names that I like at the corner. And then obviously you had the big news today, right? Like if you're talking in, in the secondary wise, you got Julian Blackman um, coming out and you, we, we hear from, from Bleach Report Insider, obviously Jordan Schultz, that he's taking a visit to Buffalo. I think we all kind of thought that maybe you're you're waiting around, maybe you pivot towards Julian Blackman to bring him back because the secondary is not a mess, but it's just like there's especially the safety position outside of him. It's very young and you're unsure, a lot of unprovenness, right? Julian Blackman coming off one of his best his best year really got hurt near the very tail end of the year. Four interceptions led the led the team in that. Looked really good, um, but he could be headed to Buffalo. So if he's headed out the door, what are you doing safety-wise? Obviously a name that we heard a lot, uh, especially Zaire Franklin tweeted it out, you know, and things like this. Quadre Diggs out of Seattle. He actually had a down year last year. You're talking about he's sitting there at that 30 years old, four interceptions the year before in 2022, made the Pro Bowl three consecutive Pro Bowls, the tail end of that. But last year, only one pick didn't look great. Obviously, they let him go. That's a name we've heard a lot. We've heard that there is mutual interest, but no contract is pending. So that's that's one that I've got out there that I'd be interested to see. The other one for me, obviously, is this is the highly coveted one. He's very going to be very specific about what he wants. And that's Justin Simmons out of out of Denver. Again, another thirty year old, but he's coming off of a three interception season. Played 15 games the year before. He had six. Very consistent. Very good, right? Very talented. Can be very picky. That's one that I think they probably dipped their toe in the water a little bit, but that's someone else. Those are just kind of some of the names that I like. I mean, because at this point, unless something just materializes out there, you've got to move on. Like, we've not signed a player since day two of free agency, really. We've signed one outside player. You've got to pivot at this point, I believe. Unless we wake up in the morning and Snead has been traded to the Colts, you've got to make some moves to shore up these positions. You cannot go with the youngsters. I love Nick Cross. I think he's got a lot of talent, but he's too green. He's not ready. Roddy Thompson's another one. Like You you have to shore this up. Kenny Moore's there, and that's fantastic. Kenny Moore is amazing. I think he's probably one of the best nickel corners, slot corners, in the history of the NFL. I'm going to say that. I mean that. But he's one, and you don't have – and you have Juju Brents, who's young, but he was injury-prone. And you got Jalen Johnson on the other side, but those are both two – you can't roll that back. You've got to sure up the secondary in some way, shape, or form. So, like I said, uh, Xavier Howard, you know, Gilly Lock, you know, Quandre Diggs, Justin Simmons. These are just a few names. I want to hear from you guys. Do you think they should pivot? First of all, do you think they should pivot and start heading out and kind of move on from this because it's looking like that's probably potentially dead? Or do you think, and if they do pivot, who are they pivoting to? Who are some corners you like? Who are some safeties you like that they could go out and try to hunt for in free agency? Y'all let me know what you think. Drop it in the comments. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, comment, all those great things. We love hearing from you guys. I can't wait to read the comments to see what you think. And as always, I love you. I know Zach loves you. I'm out.